On these first four problems, we're told we need to factor using the area model diagram, and I really do want you to try to, to use those. Even if you have mastered the symbolic factoring method where you don't need to draw a picture, uh, there will be assessments and there will be problems where you need to understand the area diagrams. So it's important that you practice it once in a while just to make sure you haven't forgotten how it works. Okay. So I've already got these kind of empty shells set up with what we know from the problems. So when we're told to factor with this, we know that we can take whatever the first term, the AX squared, and automatically put that into the picture. We know that we have to have positive 16, uh, the C term, also in your picture. And our job then is really just to figure out what combination of the long skinny X tiles, some green, some red, all green, all red, will result in negative 8X. So we think sort of the same way that, that you learn when we do the magic X symbolic method. If we're going to get positive 16, that has to be the result of multiplying the long X tiles at the bottom here and the ones on the side. Well, to get a positive 16, they either have to all be positive or all be negative, right? The signs have to be the same to result in positives. Now, if they're going to be negative 8x, then I know they're all going to be negative, right? So no matter how many you decide to use, all of these have to be negative. Now, what combination can we put together to make negative 8? But these sides have to multiply to be 16. Well, that's got to be 4 and 4, right? So if we have 4 red ones down here and 4 red ones this way, that's how we result in 16 positive tiles in the upper right. For number 2, we, I, I already put in the x squared tile and the negative 12, the 12 negative little tiny squares. And I need to decide what kind of long tiles combine to give me that negative 12. Well, in order to get a negative, I have to have some of them positive and some negative. The signs have to be different. So one chunk will be red and one chunk will be green. Now, it's not just a, a choice that you get to randomly make. Since my middle term here is positive 1x, that's telling me I need to have more positives than negatives. In fact, I need to have one more positive than negative. So the section down here in my drawing that looks like it is going to hold or, or it's set up for more should be down here. That's the section I'm going to make positive, so green tiles. And then the smaller section, because I'll have less of them, will be red. How many, though? Well, if I have to multiply to negative 12, but only be different by one, that means it must be negative three times positive four. So I guess I didn't actually write down my factors um, for either number one or number two. So back here in number one, this made us x minus four and x minus four. So our factors were x minus four times x minus 4, or x minus 4 squared. And in number 2, since this is x plus 4 and this is x minus 3, our factors are just that, x plus 4 times x minus 3. Number 3, <clears throat> again, I have a negative constant at the end, negative 28, so I'm going to have to have one section blue and, or, pardon me, one section green and one section red. Since I end up with negative three in the end here, that means I need more negatives. So this time, the larger section down here where it looks like I'll have more tiles, that will be the red ones. And then the smaller one, green, I'll have less positives. What numbers do I know that multiply to 28 
but are different by three. And that would be four times seven. Well, that means I'm going to have four green ones, because I have less of the positives, and seven of the red ones. So here's x minus 7. This is x plus 4. So our factors, x plus 4, x minus 7. And last one. This time we have positive 24. So I have two of the same style of, of long tiles here. Um, since the middle term is a positive 10x, that means I'll be multiplying positive and positive. How many? Well, they need to add up to 10. So how can I multiply to 24 and add up to 10? And that would be 4 times 6. So I'll make 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. x plus 6, x plus 4. So those are our factors, x plus 4, x plus 6. And then you get to um, factor the next set the way you probably prefer, which is symbolically, right? which is either with that magic x that we've been using in class or any other method that you may have adapted, um, that you have picked up somewhere. So, in my x, I'm looking for a product of negative 40 and a sum of negative 3. To get negative 40, I'll have to have different signs. Different by 3 means I want positive 5 and negative 8. The 8 should be the negative because it has a larger absolute value, and I want negative 3 as my leftovers. So factors x plus 5, x minus 8. Number 6. 48 for our product, 14 for our sum. I need, since it's a positive product, two of the same sign. Since the sum is positive, they're going to both be positive. So what factors of 48 add to 14? 6 times 8. So x plus 6, x plus 8. And number 7, uh-oh, there's only two terms. Well, the only chance we have to factor those are a GCF, which it doesn't have, or it could be the difference of two squares. In fact, it is that. So if you recognize it and you can immediately write down the factors, fine. I don't need to see any, any work or any x on the side. But let me go through the process just in case. This is still my c term since it doesn't have an x with it. So my desired product is negative 25. Um, there is no x term. There is no b. So that is 0 for the desired sum. Now, to get negative 25, I'm going to have to multiply a positive times a negative, but they can't be different at all since this sum is 0. That's 5 and 5. So factors x plus 5, x minus 5. All right, these next three have uh, different a values. They all, they all have a coefficient in front of the x squared. That makes them longer problems where we need to do that key number method. Okay. So we start the same way, we set up our x, but now it's important that you remember to multiply a times c to get a desired product of 24. Our sum that we're looking for still comes from the middle, negative 11. So I want factors of 24, that means two of the same sign, add up to negative 11. So they would both have to be negatives. Which numbers add to 11 and multiply to 24? 3 and 8. Now, again, those are not the final answers or factors. We're using those two numbers, negative 3 and negative 8, to break apart the middle term, negative 11x. So we leave the first term alone. We leave the last term where it is. And we split apart negative 11x into negative 3x and negative 8x. Now, What's a common factor for 2x squared minus 3x? All, we, all they share is the variable x. So undistribute that. We would have x times 2x and x times negative 3. Whenever this third term is negative, 
my GCF will have to be negative. And what can I take out of 8x and 12? That would be 4. So negative 4 times something is negative 8x. Well, times 2x. Negative 4 times something is positive 12, negative 3. Just like we expect and like we need to happen, the parentheses matches. So that's one of your factors, 2x minus 3. And the other one is made from the two GCFs, x minus 4. Okay. Setting up number 9. No GCF. 3 times negative 14 is negative 42. So my signs will have to be different. And I want a sum of negative 1. So what two numbers are different by 1 and multiply to 42? And that's 6 and 7. Since I want to end up with negative 1, I want my larger of those two, the 7, to be negative. The 6 will be positive. Use those two to split up the middle term. So we then have 3x squared minus 7x plus 6x minus 14. Like I've told you in class, when I have two different signs here, I always like to write the negative one first, but it is not uh, essential. You could do it either way. What can I take out of 3x squared minus 7x? Only a variable x times 3x to get 3x squared times negative 7 to get negative 7x. What can I take out of 6x minus 14? Well, the best I can do is a positive 2. So 2 times 3x is 6x. 2 times negative 7 is negative 14. So my final set of factors would be 3x minus 7, since that is in both sets of parentheses, and then x plus 2 made from my two GCFs. Let's do it one more time. Number 10, we're going to multiply 4 times 3 to get a product of 12. We need a sum of 13. Since the 12 is positive, I'm, I know both of these signs have to match. Since this is a positive 13, they'll both be positive. So what factors of 12 add up to 13? 1 times 12. So we will rewrite this as 4x squared, since they're both positive, it doesn't matter which one you put first, plus 1x plus 12x, and then plus 3. Out of 4x squared plus 1x, I can remove just a variable x. I would multiply that x by 4x to get 4x squared, and by 1 to get 1x. Out of 12x plus 3, I can remove a 3. 3 times 4x would be 12x, and 3 times positive 1 is 3. Our parentheses let us know that we're on the right track here. We're one step away, so our factors are 4x plus 1, and then x plus 3. All right, in the last section, we are, it, it, the directions say perform the indicated operation. So we're either going to add or subtract. Now we've talked about when you add polynomials, it's as simple as just combining like terms. The parentheses separating the two polynomials don't even matter. They're not doing anything. So I can just ignore those in number 11 as if they weren't even there. Okay? Now subtraction, there is an additional step, but when you are adding, like we have here, parentheses do nothing. So 2x and negative 4x is negative 2x. Negative 7 plus 18 is positive 11, and we're done. Number 12, with the subtraction between the two polynomials, tells me i got to do that one extra step because I've got to change all the signs in the second parentheses. The, the polynomial that follows the subtraction sign has to change. So I'm going to take the time and the effort to rewrite this. It will be worth it. 15x plus 11, and this becomes minus 9x minus 2. So then 15x minus 9x is 6x. 11 minus 2 is positive 9. Number 13 is another addition, so we just ignore the parentheses and add like terms. x squared and 2x squared is 3x squared. Uh, my next, uh, in, in standard form, going in decreasing powers, I would look at the x to the first next, which is this negative 5x. There's no other x terms to combine with that. 
And then lastly, my constant, which also has nothing else, no other constants to combine. Number 14, we see subtraction again. So that means take the extra step, take the time to distribute the negative sign and change all of the signs in that last parenthesis. So we see x squared plus 2x minus 8. This turns into minus x squared plus 3x minus 4. Combining like terms, x squared minus x squared cancels. 2x plus 3x is 5x. And negative 8 and negative 4 makes negative 12. Number 15, also subtraction. So we distribute the negative sign. We see 6x squared minus 4x. We turn this into minus 10x and plus 3. Okay. Our only like terms are these two in the middle. So we see 6x squared minus 14x and plus 3. And 16, addition again means ignore the parentheses, combine like terms right away. 5x squared and negative 2x squared is 3x squared. Negative 8x, positive 10x is positive 2x. And negative 9 and positive 15 is positive 6.